Welcome to Traveling Oracle, the magical podcast, where we talk energetics, spirituality, and how you can use this etheric knowledge to drastically change, transform, and up-level all areas of your life. Are you ready for the glow up? Let's go. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to another episode. You know, I'm always excited to be recording another episode for you guys. So much has happened for me in the past seven days. I mean, this is what I absolutely love about energetic centers like Bali. My life revolves right now around personal development, uh, spiritual development, and just developing my business and figuring out ways that I can be of better service to my clients, ways that I can help people transform their lives. That's it. That's it. And I'm like, what a beautiful, beautiful life. And I get up every day and I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for where I've come in my life. I'm so thankful for where I am right now. And I am excited to help people to reach to their versions of that in their own lives. Like, cause that's the thing, like this is the life for me. Right. And a lot of times when people try to help other people improve their lives, they try to make other people's lives look like their own. And I'm like, no, everyone has their own version of what success is. Everyone has their own version of an ideal life. And I am put on this earth to help people to balance their lives, to help people to connect spiritually, mentally, and physically, and figure out and arrive at a space in their life that they're just like, I am so happy to be alive. (laughs) Like, this is exactly who I want to be. This is exactly where I want to be. That's what I want for everyone. And so if you're listening to my podcast, you're already on that, that, what would I call it? that path to creating your own life because the people who come in contact with my energy are people who are on that energetic path, who are on that timeline of figuring out how to be their best self, how to live the best life possible, how to live a life of their dreams, basically. So for this episode, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I am going to be using one of the um, lessons that I recorded for my manifesting container Unleashed. That lesson was so powerful. I was like, I have to put this on my podcast. I have to have to have to allow more people access to this type of information. I channeled that message right after a CAP retreat and CAP is the Kundalini activation process with four powerful transmissions and guys when that energy moved through my body it's like levels of consciousness just unlocked for me things that were not really clear for me just became extremely crystal clear there was just this feeling of knowing a lot more than I did before feeling a lot more than I felt before and this feeling of seeing how everything is connected seeing how all is one and how everything makes sense like when I start playing that recording you're going to hear the shift in my voice and the power and the energy behind my voice oh my goodness guys once you start doing the work of moving energy through your body, you will start to see the way in which you shift yourself. You'll start to see how powerful the energy that are contained in different parts of your body is and how you just need to be able to access it. That's all. We all have this power. We all have this ability. It's just that a lot of us have different levels of layers of BS that cover it up. Some of us have more than others. Some of us have a little bit. Some of us have a lot. And so it's just about doing the energetic work to remove those layers so that you can connect deeply with the power that you were born with. And so I, I'm just going to stop talking now and just play. (laughs) I'm just going to play that lesson. If you guys want to connect with me, Um, I will have information for my Instagram below. I'm very active on Instagram. If you're interested in any of my programs, 
I don't even like to say interested. If you need transformation in your life, my programs will help you. Awakened, the journey within, the journey to self, to understanding who you are, balancing your mind, your body, and your spirit. Really great for people who are starting on a spiritual journey. And my second program, Unleashed, a manifesting container that helps you embody the master manifester. All links below and enjoy this episode, guys. Hello, my loves, and welcome to week four. This week, we're going to be doing things a little different. Instead of video, I'm going to be doing this week's lesson in an audio. Whew, there is so much energy running through my body right now, and everything happens for a reason. Everything happens in alignment because here I am about to record content for week four about connecting with the body, about the importance of the body when it comes to manifestation. And what happens? Last minute, I booked a retreat this weekend that put me in my body in a way that I can't even find the words to describe. It's like this weekend, I learned a new level of embodiment of energy, embodiment of spirituality, of manifestation, of the power that is held in the body. And I was like, of course, spirit would find the right time to impart this new level of knowledge and understanding to me, right as I am able to put it into this video, sorry, this recording and pass on this level of knowledge to you. So I can't wait to dive into this week's lesson of the body. I don't even know what's in there as I start speaking. I always just let spirit take over and That's how the messages that need to come out, the messages that need to come through, come through. When you leave space, when you remove your own understanding and you allow spirit to use you as a channel. And so let's see what comes through for the body. Let's start off with why it's important for you to connect with your body. Why is it important? A lot of people approach manifestation from this mental space. They approach it from the mind, which seems like a very logical step. But what we've learned in this world, when you're in spirituality, when you're in energetics, logic rarely is the right path, is the path that brings about the best results. Approaching manifestation from a mental space will only get you so far. It's almost like trying to push a boulder uphill and you kind of just, you're pushing, you're pushing and it just moves one millimeter. And for some of you, your mental capacity is strong. So you may even be able to get a little more than a millimeter, but that's just a tiny part of the whole cosmic formula of what manifestation is. Your body holds different types of energy in different places. And if you're not connected to your body, you're oblivious to them. You will hear people talking about the chakras. You will hear people talking about the different points, the different chakras in your body and what the different chakras embody, like your root chakra, which is all about being grounded. It's all about the physical plane. It's about your security. It's about your money. It's about feeling protected and feeling grounded, feeling okay in this world. And each of the chakras all have different things. Uh, Your, not solar plexus, your sacral chakra, your chakra of sexuality and creativity, the chakra of expansion and putting things out in the world, depending on where you are blocked in your life, that energy center is where you need to go to clear out and to connect. So where are you blocked in your life right now? And you might be saying, Akil, but this is about manifestation. What are you talking about? It's all connected. It's all one. Nothing is separate from the other. So where in your life are you blocked right now? Where in your life, what manifestation are you pulling into your life? And what chakra system, what energy center is that aligned with? 
If you're trying to be more creative, maybe you're a content creator, you need to focus on your sacral chakra. If you're trying to work on feeling financially stable, feeling stable in this world and drawing money towards you, you need to work on your root chakra. Your solar plexus chakra is the, is the chakra of wisdom and power. If you're feeling weak, if you're feeling like you're not being heard, if you're feeling like you have no power, if you're feeling like you don't know anything about anything, your solar plexus chakra is where you need to work on. If you're feeling blocked off from love, you feel like your self-love is low, you feel like you'd never have proper, holistic, honest love in your life, your heart chakra is where you need to work on. If you're feeling like you never have a say in anything in your life, if you're feeling like you have so much to say, but for some reason you can't get it out, even when you have opportunities to speak, even when people ask for some reason you cannot express yourself, your throat chakra. If you're, you're blocked in spirituality, something is calling you, but for whatever reason you can't connect in the way that you want, your third eye chakra spirituality in general, raising your level of consciousness, your crown chakra, their energy systems in you. That's why you always hear people talk about the fact that you contain all the answers. Everything you're asking for, the key to unlocking it is inside of you. This is not a class about chakras. I'm just teaching you the basics for you to Get started, get curious, and know what direction you need to go towards to learn more. The first step about connecting with your body is understanding the energy systems that are present in your body, understanding how they align with your physical life, how they impact your physical life, and through that understanding, you can then say, okay, I know I need to work on love and self-love and romantic love and partnerships. I know I need to work on my third, third eye chakra. I know I need to work on my heart chakra. So that's the first thing. Identifying what you want to work on, what you're trying to manifest, what you're trying to pull towards you, and then matching, with a, with, matching it with a chakra system. And whatever you're trying to manifest might not just be one chakra system. It might be a collection of them. If you're trying to manifest uh, a more efficient business or a huge business, you might need quite a few chakras to really get fine-tuned. I mean, you might need your root chakra for stability, your sacral chakra for creativity, your throat chakra for communication. So really sit down, and I'm going to like note that right now because I'm going to put that as one of the actions for you to do this week. Really sit down and match and map your manifestations with the energy centers of your body. And so once you've identified what you're working on, once you've identified where you need to really fine tune, then comes the process of clearing the blocks in that area. Because you can't feel into that energy. You can't channel that energy until you clear the blocks that are stopping you from accessing it. And how do we clear these blocks? You've got to start moving energy through your body. Much like a plumbing system, if there's a block in any of those pipes, when you turn the tap, nothing comes out. It's only when you call a plumber to do what he does and he unclogs those blockages that when you turn the pipe, water comes out. Think of that water as energy trying to move through your system. And it's through constantly moving that energy through your system on a daily basis does that pressure of the energy start to move the blockages. Because sometimes, sometimes the blockages that you have are really thick, really deep, really hard to move. But the constant push of the energy, of you moving energy, it constantly pushes against that blockage. Push, 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 push until the pressure builds up and blasts that blockage. Why can't I talk? And blasts that blockage out of your system. For some of you, it might be gentler. Just moving the energy every day will 
just pick at it, pick at it, pick at it until that energy um, blockage dissolves. And then the energy moves up to the next point in your chakra system until it meets resistance again and it works on it until that energy dissolves. You can do that daily by, I'm going to tell you the mundane, not mundane, but the simpler things that you probably already know first. And then we'll go into the more intense things that you can pick up to move this energy through your body. So first of all, movement of your body in any shape or form moves energy. So your regular types of exercise moves energy through your body because you're picking up weights. You're doing different poses. I mean, it's not yoga, but, you know, if you're squatting, you're moving your arms in this direction, like you're moving different parts of your body, which automatically starts to move energy through your body. So regular exercise is a way to get that energy moving. And especially for those of you who are trying to start businesses or trying to do things with business, like business tends to be very masculine energy, right? And while you can sit in your feminine energy of receiving, you still need to be in your masculine to create the structure of a business before you can sit in it to receive, if that makes any sense. Whatever you do, you still have to apply a lot of masculine energy in business to create the systems, to create the platforms, to create all of the things to contain and house your business. And exercising regularly raises the energy of the masculine inside you. I notice even as I've come back to Bali and I start working out even more and doing a lot more intense workouts, right after I finish my workout, I don't even leave the gym because most of the gyms here, they have beautiful restaurants or cafes that you can go into. I work out and then I go sit in the cafe, I get a smoothie, I pull out my laptop and I work. And just that hour after working out, the hour or two after working out, I find that I'm super productive. I'm super clear on what I need to do. And I realized after it happening for a while, I'm like, oh, it's because the workout, pushing, doing things to evoke a response, raise the level of masculine energy in my body. And then I'm able to use that masculine energy to push in my business, to create in my business, to do the things that I need to do in that masculine flow for my business. So that's a tip for you out there who need to do some masculine things because nowadays, Nowadays, we're in the era of teaching women to be in their feminine, which is amazing. But we cannot forget that when it comes to business, we need a balance of both. We still do need to be able to slip into our masculine energy to build. So regular exercise is super important for connecting with that masculine energy to do those things. The other thing, and remember, we're still on the regular things, um, is yoga. Guys, when I tell you yoga has really changed my life in an energetic manner, and I did not start out this way with yoga where I didn't see the value in yoga for a while, because coming from the Western side of the world where it's very... You know, I'm seeing on TikTok this new movement called the decolonization of yoga. It's become this very um, hip, cool thing to do where you see really skinny blonde ladies just being bendy and like, look how I can pose. Look how much I can stretch. It seemed very superficial for me based on what I was seeing on my side of the world. All I was seeing was people in skimpy clothing bending around and it just didn't didn't appeal to me, didn't feel authentic. It wasn't until my first trip to Bali, my first trip to anywhere in Asia, where I encountered the depth of, of, of what yoga is, the depth of how it connects you with your energy, the beauty of the movement, the beauty of the meditation, the asanas, the pranayamas, which is, is about the postures and the, the deliberate, connecting with consciousness and you're breathing while you're doing these postures there is so much power in yoga 
There's so much power in a daily practice. And what's crazy is sometimes we think, oh, I have to become this great yogi who spends hours doing yoga. I literally only did a sun salutation in the morning when I got up, which was no more than 10 minutes, and a moon salutation at night before I went to bed. And doing that for a month or two opened up my energy so much that my spiritual gifts started increasing. Opened up my energy so much I started to see in the spiritual world a lot more clearly than I've ever seen before. I started to see energetic uh, balls of light just appearing in front of me. I started to see things moving in front of me that I know were not in the 3D. I started to be woken up by hearing a voice whispering things to me. And I mean, that sounds creepy, but for me, that's kind of a normal part of life. And so the point is, whatever your gifts are, things like regular meditation, cultivating a meditative, why can I talk again? Cultivating a meditative practice will unblock the blockages in your chakra system, in your energetic body, and allow different parts of you to come online that you've never even thought that you even had. Some of you are psychic. Some of you are uh, master manifestors, and you don't even know it because your energy system is blocked. There's no energy flowing to the centers that will allow you to channel those energies and allow you to present those things in the physical world. So here's the thing. And, and the reason we're blocking or sorry, unblocking these energies in our body is because once your energy is flowing through your body in the way that it should manifestation is just about you deciding you want something and it's coming in. Manifestation no longer becomes something you need to do. It becomes who you are. You are the manifester. That's why you will hear people in the spiritual community speak about embodiment. That is a higher level of learning and understanding. Understanding with your mind is of this 3D. Understanding with your body is a level of mastery that is just otherworldly. And so that's why we're unblocking. That's why we're flowing energy through the body. That's why we're connecting. Because connecting in that manner, flowing energy through your body in that manner is the embodiment of spirituality is the embodiment of the manifester. Anything you want comes towards you. Anything you focus on cannot help but move towards you. Everything has to shift once you decide it needs to shift. You don't need any bullshit techniques about this manifesting method and that manifesting method and put this under your pillow and do this 33 times. You don't need any of any of that. You don't need any gimmicks. You don't need any tricks. You are the embodiment of the manifester. The third common but powerful way to unblock and clear and move energy powerfully through your body is specific meditations. specific meditations for a specific center. So like we we already spoke about aligning or figuring out which chakras match whatever it is you're trying to manifest and focus on clearing and connecting with those chakras. There are many meditations that will help you connect to different types of chakras, different tones that you can listen to in meditation, different mantras that you can um, chant during those meditations. And specifically for this work of moving energy, I would recommend highly chanting uh, mantras because the chanting process helps to raise that vibration, helps to spread that vibration that that mantra brings throughout the body and activate that center that correlates with that mantra. Like mantras are very, very powerful. So that's something else that you could really look into different mantras for different chakras that will help you to bring it about change or shift energy in your life that corresponds with that chakra. 
And I'll tell you what, around the same time um, as I started to do my sun salutation, my moon salutation, I did a meditation in the morning and a meditation in the evening. And guys, I mean, some of them I did longer, like uh, 30 minutes, but most of them were just 15 minute meditations, 20 minute meditations, along with my five or 10 minute uh, yoga practice in the morning and the evening. And when I did those things, one day I was in meditation and I felt this huge blast of energy just like appear right below my belly button. And then it just shot up through my spine all the way out through my head. And it felt like fire. I mean, it wasn't burning or anything, but that's what that's what my my spiritual eye saw. It felt and looked like fire coming up, 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 up. And then it almost felt like wings unfolded as well. And so that combination, guys, of meditation and yoga will in itself free your energy up, move your energy through your body. That combination is a magic combination. As a matter of fact, well, a Balinese high priest told me, he said, I can see your gifts. He said, these are the three things you need to do in your life to connect powerfully with energy. He said, exercise every day. It doesn't need to be intense. It could just be um, a little brisk walking nature, or it could be an intense exercise. But he said, exercise every day, meditate every day, and do yoga every day. He said, do those three things and you will connect powerfully with your energy and everything will start to shift for you. And so said, guys, so done. Again, the aim here is to connect with your energy so that you become the manifester. So that it's second nature to you just like breathing is. So those are three things you can get started with today to start connecting with your body, connecting with the energy centers in your body. I'm going to introduce two other things that I have. Well, I've experienced one of them this weekend. And the next thing is the thing I'm going into because I, I told Spirit, I know that I always have a very good mental connection. I always have a very good spiritual connection, but my, my connection with my body has always been a problem for me. And I said, this is what I am going to focus on this year, connecting with my body, because I also know not only is it important spiritually, it's important for manifestations. It's important for me to be able to connect with my vessel so that I can hold the manifestations I'm trying to seek or I'm trying to attract. It's important for me to understand the edges of my vessel, understand my ability to hold that type of energy because a lot of us are asking for things energetically or we're asking for physical things whose energy signatures are way too big for the vessel that we currently have. The energy signatures of the things that we're asking for will destroy us. Think about the person who, who wins $10 million and goes crazy. Think of the person who uh, meets the person of their dreams, everything they ever want, and sabotages the relationship. A lot of us, we want, we want, our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. We want, we want, we want, but we don't have the energetic capacity to receive, to hold and sustain. And so a lot of your manifestations are blocked because spirits like, you cannot handle this. You cannot handle what you're asking for. You're asking for the spotlight to host huge seminars for people to see you, to be seen, to be heard. Yet if it's given to you, you're going to choke backstage because you didn't practice anything um, with your throat chakra. You didn't practice speaking in front of a smaller audience. You didn't practice and, and master anything about stage presence. If that opportunity is handed to you today, you will bomb it. You'll mess it up. And so there's a lot more to manifestation than just wanting something and it arriving. 
Spirit has to make sure that you have the energetic capacity to receive, to handle, to process, and to hold. And connecting to your energy, moving energy through your body helps you to widen the energetic capacity of your vessel. It helps to strengthen the walls energetically of your vessel so that you can hold the things you need, so that you can hold the things that you want. So the next two things that I want you to look into to explore, to see if there's anything around your uh, physical community that can help you to connect with this is anything to do with awakening of the Kundalini energy. This weekend, I went to a Kundalini activation retreat and I happened upon it. Mm, that is not true. I was about to say I happened upon it by accident, but no, it was very directed. Like I mentioned earlier, my main thing this year is how to connect with my body. And I kept hearing, I've heard that a lot in the spiritual community. And I understood it from an intellectual standpoint. But I was like, what does that actually mean? How do I connect with my body? I've been doing exercises here and there. I've been doing my yoga. How can I connect more with my body? And this weekend, I understood that on a body level. I understood. I am now have embodied the understanding of what that is. This weekend, I went to a Kundalini activation um, process re- retreat. And when I felt that energy run through my body, I knew. What did I know? I knew that all of it is connected and everything that's connected is also located in me. Everything that I want, I have the power to have. Everything that I need, I have. Everything I want, I have. Everything that is, is in me and I am everything. It is a crazy energy to feel and I've felt drips of it before, but a... uh, event where someone activates it for you, someone runs that energy through your body through a transmission is something out of this world. And what Kundalini energy is, it's the energy located at the base of your spine, Shakti. It's the divine feminine energy. And even though it's divine feminine energy, it's not um, only for women. It's found in men and women because all of us as humans, we are balanced with masculine energy and feminine energy everyone has a bit of both and so it it helps both men and women to activate this energy to connect with this energy and allow that energy to flow through your chakra system to flow through your energetic body and as it moves it clears As it moves, it lights up different centers. As it moves, it shifts the energy in your body. It heals wounds. It heals trauma. It activates energy centers. This energy is something that words fail me when I try to explain. And words don't fail me a lot. I can talk forever about things. Words, 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 words rarely, rarely fail me. But this energy is something, and it makes sense because it's something of the spiritual world. It's hard to 3D physicalize that, for lack of better words. And that type of energy, when you feel the strength of your own energy moving through you, When you feel the texture of divinity located in your soul, you understand that you are the manifester. You understand that you are created in the image of God and pieces of the essence of God is embedded in you. And that's why you are a small creator. You create your own reality around you. You create your own life. You decide what you want to do in life. You decide what you want to be in life and you build it around you. Man, that energy is something that changes your life. Like my life cannot be the same after having that sort of kundalini awakening with multiple transitions. I can never be the same. I've already felt how much my consciousness has elevated. 
My intuition is crystal clear. Even things that I've been trying to manifest for a very long time, now they're just like popping up in my reality. They're just popping up. I'm just like, oh, so it can be this easy. Once you connect to your energies, guys, once you connect to what you naturally have, everything shifts for you. So Kundalini energy. And I went to a Kundalini activation event. There are many different ways to awaken Kundalini. There's Kundalini yoga. There are different poses and different things that you can do. There's Kundalini meditation. There's breath work. That's another powerful thing to move energy through your body. If you're not into breath work, I should have even mentioned this before Kundalini. Breath work really, really... Um, gets into your system and moves energy because breath is life. And when you're controlling that breath, when you're controlling the rhythm, controlling the length, controlling whether it's in you or out of you, when you're doing that type of controlled breathing, you move and manipulate energy in your system. So breath work is another really easy thing that you can do on your own. Go on YouTube. You can do courses on it if you would like that really shifts energy for you. So check your area. There are Kundalini um, facilitators for activation all over the world. If there is one near you, I will highly recommend that you do it. If you can't find any Kundalini activation facilitators, then perhaps you can look into Kundalini yoga online. I'm sure there's a lot of things on YouTube or purchasing a program from someone. There's lots of practitioners around that have programs that you can follow from home. Lots of kundalini meditations that you can follow from home. Activating that divine feminine energy for you is powerful. And that leads into the last thing I want to talk about. And it's tantra. Now, when people hear tantra, they they automatically think sex. I mean, that is a part of it, but it is not all encompassing of it. Um, Even this weekend, I learned about white Tantra, red Tantra, and black Tantra. And what I would recommend is the white Tantra, which is about helping you to access your own sexual energy and manipulate and move that energy, helping you to understand how to connect with your sexual energy yourself. Because sexual energy is literally life force energy. Like that's the energy that creates life that creates children, babies, that births new life into this world. Sexual energy is extremely powerful energy. And I do believe that's why religions like Christianity have this vein of shame when it comes to uh, sexual energy because it's such potent energy. If everyone were to learn how to use it, if everyone were to learn how to uh, move it and manipulate it and use it, oh my goodness. We would have leaders everywhere. We'd have people who are challenging the system everywhere, challenging the way the world works everywhere because that energy is so powerful. And once you find, once you connect with the power of who you are, you can never go back. And no one can hold you down. No one can manipulate you because you understand and you are standing and being in your power. Mm. And that's all I wish for everyone. That's it. All I wish is for you to understand who you are, to understand the power that you carry, to understand the divinity that's located inside you, to understand that you are a magical creature, to understand that you are a master manifester, to understand that everything you seek from other people, everything you seek from a partner, everything you seek from a guru or a teacher, you already have in you. You don't need anybody. And that's why I always say there's nothing wrong with buying a program from someone like me or following a guru. There's nothing wrong with it. But you always must look out for the gurus who come from a place of I am all knowledge and I pour into you. Any guru who thinks they know it all and they're all encompassing of all information, (laughs) run. 
the mark of a good guru, the mark of a good teacher is one who helps you on the journey to yourself. The one who guides you to healing yourself. Remember that because there's a lot of bullshit out there. And so these are the ways that I've found are really helpful in clearing out energetic blockages and connecting to your energy centers. So I recommend that as you go through this week working on this module, that you try different combinations of the different modalities I mentioned here. Um, there, are a lot, there are a lot of things that you can get started with today by yourself, just going on YouTube and looking for a type of meditation or a type of yoga or a type of breath work. Um, you can get started today and then start looking around your community to see if there's anyone who uh, offers any of maybe the kundalini yoga sessions, kundalini activation sessions, white tantra, uh, even ooh, something else that I wanted to mention that I didn't is kriya yoga. That's something else I was uh, introduced to this week. And kriya yoga is a type of yoga that really focuses on the movement of energy. It's more focused on pranayama and you can feel that energy moving through your spine. I would highly recommend Kriya Yoga as well. I feel like it's one of the types of yoga that's not really um, out there, I would say, or, or as present everywhere. So you might have a bit of difficulty just finding like videos on YouTube. You might find a few, but if you're really interested in Kriya Yoga, I would say... You could look into specific teachers online that offer online sessions because it's still, I don't know how to explain it. It's not that it's a small community, but it is a small community in comparison to other types of yoga um, or yogic teachings. So man, that Kriya Yoga really moves energy through your body. So the really strong things are the Kundalini activations and the Kundalini Yoga and Kundalini med uh, meditations, the Tantra and the Kriya. But remember, the things that I mentioned earlier as well also do work. And so don't discount them because the work of the body takes time. Because the body is the part of us that is correlated with the physical plane. And the physical plane is subject to natural laws through which everything must move. And so when you're dealing with connecting with the body, you still have to remember there's a gestational period. And so there are things that move a little faster, like the Kriya and the um, Kundalini activations. But be, be patient with your body. It's doing the best it can. Be patient with yourself. Remember that with the body, you're dealing with earth energy. Earth energy is slow moving energy. Earth energy is stable energy. It's grounded energy. It's not like fire that's really quick and burns and just goes and goes and goes. It's stable. It's grounding and it moves in its own time. It's the same thing when you're working with your body. Be patient. That's a message to me because as an Aries, I want everything now. And life has been trying to teach me patience. So <laughs> I don't know who that's for, but I know it's going to help somebody out there. And I think that's it for the body, guys. Um, I will have the activities for this week below to help you connect with your body, to clear out those energies, to connect with those energies, to move the energy through your body. And I can't wait to hear how that's going for you.